Hello, and thanks for tuning in to BC4 for our weekly podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Tompkins, and today we'll be talking about what the forces at play are when humans perpetrate acts of evil. Joining me today are two of my esteemed colleagues, Stephanie Lai and Rebecca Zhao. So why don't the both of you tell us what you define as evil? What does the word actually mean to the both of you? Well, I guess evil is a very hard thing to define, but to my understanding, evil is what we as a society consider to be socially immoral. It's practically going against the law. In the case with Lord of Lies, it's anything which is considered socially immoral in the sense that civilization would be strongly against it if you perform the deed. I agree with that, but just to clarify, evil is more in the eye of the beholder, as some people we perceive to be evil do not believe that they are evil themselves. An infamous example would be the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, otherwise known as ISIS, an Islamic terrorist group with the objective of claiming power. In their eyes, terrorizing and killing others is necessary to their cause, as they believe as they believe it is for the greater good and do not see it as evil. Rebecca, you brought up the novel Lord of the Flies by William Golding and your perception of evil within the book. Why don't we talk about that? How exactly does the novel demonstrate an understanding and give a perception of evil on the island? The book Lord of the Flies demonstrates to us that evil is inherent through its characters and various symbols throughout the text. In Lord of the Flies, the young boys marooned on an uninhabited island create a paranoid illusion of a beast, which is later revealed to be really just the evil within themselves. This is portrayed during Simon's encounter with the pig's head in the story. The pig's head, which is most likely the symbol of the evil within all the boys, was noted to have said to Simon, Fancy thinking the beast was something you could hunt and kill. I'm part of you. The words, I'm part of you already suggest that evil is a part existing within all of us, not an external force. With this, we can conclude that Lord of the Flies is a well-written piece of text, displaying that evil can be unleashed in the young and the naive, the most innocent among us. That being said, Stephanie, what do you think? Do you agree with that? I know that both of you have read the book, so what's your opinion on Lord of the Flies? What do you think made the boys act in that way? What I did do you think William Golding was trying to get across? I disagree with Rebecca's arguments, as the boys from the very beginning of the novel do not show many signs of savagery, but as time progresses, their environment, namely the island, and the rest of the boys, nurtures and provokes what becomes full-blown barbarity. The environment in question is that of isolation from society and authority, which leads to too much freedom. Without the laws and pressures of everyday society, me children are left to their own devices. As their environment shapes and alters the boys' morals and belief, the beast slowly starts to make more appearances. If Eva was inherent as Rebecca stated earlier, wouldn't it have confronted them as soon as they arrived on the island? But then why did the boys suddenly change? Jack, for example, was the leader of the choir boys. All the choir boys sang for the church, said to grow up outstanding law-abiding citizens, but ended up turning savage and murderous. Golding writes a line in the novel depicting the hunter's feelings after slaughtering the pig. Quote, imposed their will on it, taken away its life like a long, satisfying drink. End quote. Such a description encapsulates the idea that the boys deep down already had the desire and want to kill the pig. So really, did their childhood and parents influence who they became, or was it a part of them from the start? Despite this, in Lord of the Flies, one of the most prominent roles is of Ralph, whom the other boys choose as their leader. Ralph mentioned that his father is from the Navy, thus suggesting that he has grown up with an environment stricter and more stringent than others. His upbringing plays a vital role in the development of his character as the story progresses. As he remains most loyal to the rules, he seems to be the most sensible and law-abiding of the group. Thus, it takes longer for his evil to be nurtured by the environment. This further encourages the idea that evil can be nurtured in anyone, as long as there is a certain environment and background. I'd have to say that this is not the case, as demonstrated in Lord of the Flies. All the boys were shown to come from different backgrounds. This is shown through the ways of speech indicated by Piggy's middle-class Cockney accent. Therefore, the boys' upbringings clearly ranges from lower class to upper class. By the end of the story, we are shown that nearly every one of them give in to their own desires and evil intentions, regardless of what background they come from. This tells us that evil is there regardless of the social status or level. Just because you are educated well does not mean you are less likely to give poor decisions. This further promotes the idea that evil is nurtured rather than inherent in human nature, as without this circumstance, the evil would never have been cultivated. What about real life then? Hitler, for example. He committed many heinous and evil crimes in the eyes of the world, but he didn't consider such things evil. What do you think were the reasons for him to commit such acts? His upbringing plays a vital role in the development of his character as the story progresses, as he remains most loyal to the rules. Since he seems to be most sensible and law-abiding of the group, it takes longer for his evil to be nurtured by the environment around him. This further encourages the idea that evil can be nurtured in anyone, as 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 long as there is a certain environment and background. Evil is taught rather than inherent, and to demonstrate this, we should examine one of the most infamous examples of evil, Adolf Hitler. His upbringing was not fortunate, as he was abused as a child by his father, and in turn bullied and abused his sister Paula. This goes to show that his evil was influenced, not yet if you will, at an early stage which in the long run affected his view on life and others. As well as family complications, Hitler had many debates about other aspects of his life, including education. Hitler initially showed great interest in art. To this day, you can look up his old artworks. 
However, his family disapproved, and thus it led him to pursue other career paths. If Hitler had not had such a dysfunctional childhood, perhaps he would not have grown up to be the fascist dictator the world remembered him as. For all we know, he might have grown up to be a painter had his parents encouraged him. Does that mean all evil people are influenced by their family and backgrounds, and that their decisions are all results of poor upbringing and education? The fact is that many Nazis during the genocide of the Jews are shown to have come from reputable backgrounds, or are very educated in some way. An example of this is Greta Bosel, who was a trained nurse and was put with the responsibility of determining the health of the Jewish prisoners, deeming whether or not they were fit for labour, with the unfit ones to be gassed immediately. Nurses are often associated with saving lives and assisting the ill. They also require a good amount of advanced education in order to practice. However, Bosel was known to have said, if they, referring to the prisoners, cannot work, let them rot. This shows that despite physical upbringing or education, a human can still carry out actions without remorse or regard for human life. Greta Bozo cannot be considered a nurse in the first place, as assessing the working capabilities of prisoners is not part of an ordinary nurse's job requirement. However, after being exposed to the horrors of a concentration camp, Greta Bozo most likely became desensitized to the death and suffering she saw every day, thus only proving that the evils she committed were the aftermath of her exposure to the environment. The harsh surroundings were most likely the cause of her killing intent and lack of remorse. So that's it for today. So nature or nurture? Which one is it really? Tune in again next week for our weekly podcast on BC4. Bye!